very good evening and a warm welcome to state of business on art television i am samindri jawardena let's look at the headlines for the day proposal to bring all personal data under one national data center will be done professionally assures state minister 30 km matra beliat expressway will be vested in the public by february next year news in detail President Gotabe Rajapaksa directs public sector officials to explore the possibility of gathering personal information under one data center. President explains his brainchild during a meeting with the officials of the Ministry of Information and Communication Technology held at the Presidential Secretariat yesterday. President Gotabe Rajapaksa has paid his attention to bring gathering of all personal information such as national identity cards, driving licenses, immigration and emigration documents, registration of births and deaths under one data collection center. He suggests that this will be instrumental in reducing time, effort and money spent on such services at present. President Rajapaksa explains that the existing practice is to gather the same information by several entities and if this can be brought under one umbrella organization it will greatly reduce delays and ensure efficiency he also said that this will prevent the circulation of erroneous and duplicitous information he further added that the interconnectivity among ministries departments and semi governmental organizations is vital in the development process of the country and a high level of productivity can be achieved by networking relevant organizations the attention of the president was drawn to assigning some of the projects currently under the purview of the ministry of information and communication technology to the ministries or institutions which are directly responsible for the outcome of the program Minister Bandulu Gunawardena, State Minister Lakshman Yapa Abewardena, secretaries to the ministries and several other officials were present at the discussion. <music> Meanwhile, elaborating further on government's proposal to bring all the personal data under one national data center, State Minister of International Cooperation Susi Premajanth assures that the data of the citizens will be managed professionally. by the measure and that new laws will be enacted to preserve all confidential data at the moment we don't have laws to prevent leaking of such information to a, this is only a proposal once the proposal is there so then we have to get together have to get down the legal uh, professionals ages department and all that and then we have to study how the developed countries have done this and all that thereafter of course we introduce new laws if necessary and then amendment to the existing laws and then only we can implement that now two weeks ago we had a initial discussion and the second rounds of talk held recently and then within next couple of days we are going to have a, a larger group icta uh, the technology uh, there are certain institutions who are engaged with the uh, uh, technology transformations and uh, presidential secretariat there's a undp they are they are willing to assist us by giving us a technical assistance as well as financial assistance once we uh, submit the proposal the central bank of sri lanka yesterday said it will take appropriate measures on banks that have not complied with the order to reduce the average weighted prime lending rate for end 2019 in accordance with the monetary law act issuing a statement the central bank said the monetary law act order number no. 2 of 2019 required every licensed commercial bank to reduce their weekly average weighted prime lending rate by at least 250 basis points by 27 december 2019 compared to their awpr published by the central bank as of 26 april 2019 in the weekly economic indicators publication This shall not apply to licensed commercial banks whose average weighted prime lending rate reaches or falls below 9.5% per annum as at the date of this order or any time thereafter. The central bank says that several LCBs have complied with above order and in particular some LCBs have reduced their AWPR sharply during the week ending 27 December 2019 from the previous week ending 20 December 2019 to meet this regulatory requirement. 
Accordingly, the overall weekly AWPR has declined by 230 basis points from 12.24 percent as at 26 April 2019 to 9.94 9 percent as at 27 December 2019. This is the first time since 29 April 2019 that AWPR has declined to single-digit levels. As per the order, any LCB shall not increase its AWPR from the reduced level and it is expected that market lending rates, particularly those linked to AWPR, will continue to decline in the period ahead with regular repricing. However, the central bank says that People's Bank, Commercial Bank of Ceylon PLC, Indian Overseas Bank, MCB Bank Limited, Public Bank Berhad, Standard Chartered Bank, Amana Bank PLC and Axis Bank Limited have failed to comply with the Monterey Law Act Order No. 2 of 2019. Thus, the CBLCL says it intends to take appropriate measures in relation to these banks as well as those licensed banks that have not met with the other provisions of the order to ensure that the general public continues to benefit from an efficient transmission of recent policy decisions through the financial system. In terms of electricity demand growth and investment needs, single buyer and transmission licensee Ceylon Electricity Board forecasts that sales will grow at the rate of about 7.5% until 2021 and then decline to about 5% per year by the end of the decade. The Ceylon Electricity Board stresses that the peak demand is forecasted to cross 3,000 MW by 2020 and reach 4,800 MW by 2030. According to Asian Development Bank's Sri Lanka Energy Sector Assessment, Strategy and Roadmap Sri Lanka, the time of occurrence of the peak demand is expected to shift from the late evening to early afternoon by 2027. To meet the growing demand at the lowest cost, CEB plans indicate the investment requirements for power generation to be 2,400 million US dollars from 2020 to 2025. Giving an overview of the electricity industry in Sri Lanka, the Asian Development Bank's report highlights that at present the electricity industry has three major constraints such as capacity shortage and delays in implementation of mainstream power plants, slow growth in renewable energy development and severe financial crisis mainly attributed to non-cost reflective tariffs. Stay tuned for more news right after this break. Welcome back after the break. Prime Minister Mahindra Rajapaksa says that Ayurveda medicine system in the country should be developed for the benefit of the people in the country as well as of the world. Prime Minister Rajapaksa made these observations while participating in the opening ceremony of the Aditya Ayurveda Hospital in Andhradapura recently. The Aditya Ayurveda Hospital is a concept of renowned Ayurvedic physician S.S. Gunavardhana and Prime Minister Mahindra Rajapaksa participated at the opening ceremony of the hospital in Andhradapura last Friday. The Ayurveda Hospital is a fully-fledged, high-tech and eco-friendly facility that comprises two wards, 24 rooms, 12 treatment rooms, a canteen, emergency care unit, laboratory, gymnasium and an OPD. Addressing the gathering, the Prime Minister highlighted traditional healers and their healing methods are gradually disappearing from our community and the efforts like this should be appreciated. He also said that the new government has fully understood the importance of the Ayurvedic healing system and for the first time a state minister has been appointed to look into the Ayurvedic medical system. The Premier further added that the government will assist the Ayurvedic doctors and centres to conduct researches and experiments to enhance Ayurvedic treatments. Economic analyst Varuna Singapuli emphasises that the key sectors that Sri Lanka should improve are SMEs, technology, knowledge process outsourcing, tourism and port-related sectors. Singapore made these observations talking to the art televisions, the BizWatch program, which we aired last Sunday. So in terms of foreign earnings, there are four sectors that I'm talking about. One is SME, because that will make sure that the income goes, trickles down to a broader segment of the economy. Because if the SMEs grow, 
geographically throughout Sri Lanka jobs will open up and people will have more money. Next would be technology and KPO because that's where the world is today and that's where the world will be tomorrow. Again, it will open up a lot of jobs, it will drive economy and it will take Sri Lanka to the world. Thirdly, I would say is the tourism which is the low hanging fruit. Uh, if you take since the war ended in 2009, it has been pretty much tourism that has grown. In fact, in fact if I uh, show you, if you take from 2009 to 2019, tourism is the segment that has really grown in terms of foreign earnings. And fourthly, I would say is sport related because see, Sri Lanka is an island. We sit right in the middle of the sea route from, from the Europe to, the, to Asia. So there's a lot of potential in terms of port related industries, whether it's bunkering, whether it's ship building, whether it's uh, container handling. Consultancy firm FSDI Construction Company says work on the 30 km Madhra Biliat Expressway costing 125 billion rupees is almost complete and it can be vested in the public by February next year. The 96 km extension from Madhra to Hambantote consists of four main sections, namely section 1 of 30 km from Madhra to Beliata, section 2 of 26 km from Beliata to Vatia, section 3 of 15 km from Vatia to Andaravava, and section 4 of 25 km from Hambantote to Matala via Andaravava. Consultant engineer of the consultancy firm FSDI Construction Company, Nayan Samranayaka says the construction work on the 30 km Matra Beliata Expressway is almost complete and it can be vested in the public by February next year. Nayan Samranayaka further added that once the expressway is open, motorists from Matra can reach Beliata within 18 minutes and this facility will be a boon to southern industrialists and farmers as they could move their export products faster. Samanaika said the Matra Beliata expressway also has several special features. The Hakman Matra main road crosses it at Kapuduwa through an overhead bridge. There is only a single interchange in it before Beliata at Hingru Pattala. The road runs along a flyover bridge along the Nilwala Ganga Basin to facilitate environmental protection, flood control and paddy cultivation activities. The expressway which runs through the Dandania Forest Reserve has an overhead animal crossing to facilitate the free movement of wild animals. Samarnaika said construction work on the section of the expressway from Beliata to Vatia is ongoing but the other sectors of the expressway from Vatia to Hambantota have already been vested in the public. The national carrier of Sri Lanka and a member of the One World Alliance, Sri Lankan Airlines concludes the year with a series of global awards after being well received in major travel and tourism award ceremonies worldwide. The airline's purple patch started at ITB Berlin earlier this year and Sri Lankan Airlines won three coveted awards at the Golden City Gate Awards, beating over 148 submissions by 32 countries. The three awards included a first star award in the airline's corporate category for its product video, another first star for its India outbound video in the TV cinema spot category and a third star award in the same category for its Melbourne Marathon video 2018. The airline's marketing campaign that marked the commencement of operations between Melbourne and Colombo, titled Two Cities, One Spirit, received a gold award in the category Marketing Career at Pata Awards 2019. The airline managed to back Asia's leading airline to the Indian Ocean title for the third consecutive year and world's leading airline to the Indian Ocean for the fourth consecutive year at the World Travel Awards Asia and World Ceremonies consecutively. Sri Lankan Airlines was also one of the title sponsors of the historic Melbourne Marathon as it became Australia's largest ever marathon this year, attracting a total of 37,185 athletes, while Sri Lankan Airlines' half-marathon event recorded yet another sellout. Stay tuned for stock updates right after this break. Welcome back after the break. Trading at Columbus Stock Exchange ended on negative note today. 
Dow share price index dropped 26.79 points to close at 6,129.21 and the S&P SL20 dropped 21.31 points to close at 2,936.96. The turnover was 965 million rupees and over 49 million shares were traded. Up next are Forex trades. That's all news for today. Do join us tomorrow with State of Business. Until then, take care and goodbye.